Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be five minutes. Today in the news, PlayStation Stars is here, and I was seeing all sorts of reports about how it has the same tier rewards as Japan, and if you're a tier four, you get better service, and apparently there's a hidden fifth tier. I even saw Greg Miller post some of his rewards, and I was like, okay. All right, I gotta try it out and see what's up. And I wish I had something to report to you, but I don't. The damn thing uh, kept crashing. <laughs> I signed up, it was working. I can't access anything, it keeps crashing on me, so maybe I'll have info tomorrow. In continuing with news of things you can't get access to, Overwatch 2 ran into some trouble on day one. As with many titles, especially Blizzard ones, you can expect launch day to be <laughs> A complete shit show. Errors and cues are pretty much the standard and have been for like a decade, if not more. And the following always happens. A ton of people get hyped for the game. Everyone logs on on day one. There's a massive queue. There are crashes. Everything's overloaded. And then people get really angry and they're like, oh, why am I doing this? And they hate on it. And they remember how much they hated day one. And then the next game comes out and they line up for day one. <laughs> It's the same thing that always happens. I've been there, you've been there. We love to complain. But this time, it appears the trouble was also coming from an external mass distributed denial of service DDoS attack, which typically occurs when something is maliciously flooded with traffic to prevent others from connecting. The attack even continued into the evening when Aaron Keller of Overwatch tweeted that the DDoS was still happening at 9.30 p.m. And even though I'm not playing, admittedly, I do feel bad for people who want to play, right? It sucks to have to go through all of that, or, or worse, get in the game, get disconnected, and then get pushed back into a queue. That's That's gotta be demoralizing. But hey, look, you wanted to play Overwatch, a game where according to this Reddit post, you have to grind for eight months to get a legendary skin? I tried to find confirmation of this and everyone seems to be like, yeah, 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 that's, that's, that's true, or spend money. So if, if anything, Overwatch players, Enjoy suffering. Our next story is one that on the surface doesn't seem immediately about games, but trust me, it is. Yesterday, the European Union, Parliament and Council announced a new law that by 2024, all electronics sold in the EU will need to use a USB type C for charging ports. The goal is a unified standard to reduce electronic waste. And if all chargers are the same, buyers can be able to choose to purchase goods without chargers to make consumers' lives easier. Something the folks over at Apple have been actively working against for years. And while the fall 2024 deadline applies to everything from phones to tablets to earbuds to handheld game consoles, there's one exception in that laptop manufacturers will have an additional 40 months to comply. Devices would be able to feature alternate ports if the manufacturer chooses, but the charging speed must be the same for any compatible charger. And that's huge for so many reasons. Uh, another great way to think of it is sort of like here in California, by 2035, all new cars and trucks sold in the state need to be zero emissions vehicles. And since the state is very big and buys a lot of stuff, car companies are now doing their damnedest to meet that deadline as early as possible so they can keep selling cars in California. The result being that in this country and the world in general, more and more electric cars are gonna get made, less and less gas ones. And this USB-C thing is Roughly the same. You have these companies in the EU, and if they want to compete there, they got to switch to USB-C. And that's going to make them switch to USB-C around the world, and that's a benefit to all of us. Less cords, less plugs, less hassle, less crap to buy, less being sold, adapters for 50 bucks for no damn reason. It is very consumer friendly. I'm totally here for it. USB-C is great. It's super fast. It is... Beyond me, why anyone would fight this, but I expect people will, so... Now, if only we could convince the three big console manufacturers to, I don't know, adopt some sort of universal controller scheme. I mean, I can dream, right? Speaking of my dreams, thank you to everyone who's been subscribing lately. It means the world to me. We are on the road to a million subscribers. You're blowing my mind. It's amazing. Thank you. Uh, we are less than... Technically, we're less than 8,000 away, so... Pretty, pretty blown away by that. If we can get to 7,000, I can start saying I'm 7,000 away. Wouldn't that be nice? Anyway, that's it for the show. I'll see you tomorrow for another episode, 5-Minute Gaming News.